Hi guys, welcome back. Day six, ankle to knee challenge. Hopefully you're beginning to see a little bit of progress, even if just from doing consistent practice every day towards having more space, more ease, easier breath in ankle to knee. Today we're gonna to look at a different pose that's really gonna get into that external rotation and we'll talk about the pillars, the structure of the pose so we're centered in our joint, so the muscles will lengthen where they need to, will engage where they are, and you may begin to notice or even overcome some of the stuck patterns of a muscle inhibition and other muscles overcompensating and picking up the slack. So we're gonna do Gomukhasana, cow face pose. We're gonna use the wall to really find the hip joints, talk about different ways of opening up all the way around, engaging, and then we're gonna flip it and test it out in space without the wall. So we're gonna come in, legs at the wall first. Settle. Can you even get your heels over your seat? This requires um, a normal range of motion in the hamstrings, which a lot of people don't actually have. So if you need to back away from the wall, again, that's a lot of information that you might need to focus on more um, lengthening the hamstrings, but also strengthening the hamstrings. So we're talking about this first fold, we talk about it all the time, the ability to move your pelvis, not take the movement from the rib cage. So I'm just thinking, okay, hip flexion, feet at the wall. I have a neutral, um, I have the curves of my lower back. I'm not tucking and lifting my butt up off the floor. Remember we did that first pigeon um, on our backs, okay? So, flexion, and then taking the legs up. So let's come into Bhattakonasana. Soles of the feet together. You're gonna, now I want you to rock your pelvis, anterior tilt, posterior tilt. So getting again, when you go into that anterior tilt and you have more of the lumbar curve, you may feel more of the tightening up on the inner thighs and the AD doctor muscles, okay? And then press your heels together and add more external rotation. Wherever you feel this in your hip, wherever, right side, left side, where along that ball and socket joint do you feel it? That's gonna give you a lot of information of where there may be an injury um, or some weakness or some impingement. Take your legs back up and preach it around your legs up the wall. All right, right side, ankle to knee. How does this feel? Have you rounded your tail? So stick your butt up. We're gonna add more flexion, bring your left foot to the wall. So what we've done is brought our right shin closer to us. This is like coming forward over the legs and ankle to knee. And now I need to add again, reach through the inner heel, move the right knee away, add external rotation, and stick my butt out. And now I'm really beginning to feel the breath and some movement and some lengthening right in the piriformis muscle, the deep external rotator. So I'm just gonna also think that my pelvis is level, stick my butt up. So you keep doing the same thing again and again and again. But this time, the more you do it, the more consistent you are, you will get different results. And then try the other side. Okay, bend the right knee. It's gonna bring your left leg closer to you instead of having to come forward. So I can't round my back because my back is against the floor. I'm gonna actively think that I'm sticking my butt out to get into those muscles at the back of the hip and then add external rotation. Notice your body's gonna be sneaky, yeah? It's gonna try and go the way of the path of least resistance where you know how to go. Are you hiking your left hip up? Smile the whole time and then come back, legs up the wall back to Baddha Konasana. Okay, so this feels different now than the first one that I did, and maybe you notice the same thing. And again, that's your body's ability to change. I'm gonna stick my butt out as if I'm gonna try and get that lumbar curve. So if I were sitting, I'd be sitting more upright in Baddha Konasana and not having to do it with my 
upper body. Okay, today's pose is Gomukhasana. Right leg on top. When we sit in Gomukhasana, for a lot of people, their heels are way back um, on either side of their seat. Move your knees away from you to get that lumbar curve. The more facility you have in your hip joints, the more you're gonna be able to move your shins more uh, parallel to each other. Send the knees forward and up. So that'll be up towards the ceiling and towards the wall at the same time. Let the head and neck be heavy. So again, I'm maintaining a neutral spine and really getting into the hip joints. The wall is an amazing prop, <laughs> just like the floor. And I'm gonna activate my inner feet. So I'm gonna actually think this heel is gonna lift more. Oh my goodness, I feel that in my hip. And then change legs. Oh, right away, I can, this hip wants to lift up. I'm gonna get out of that sensation. So think you're on a spit from head to tail. Think you're reaching through the inner heels. Think that you can, uh, your hip bones are gonna move towards each other because Gomukhasana is really about the width of the sacrum. Reach through the inner heel, so even the outer heels can lift away from the wall, which will help you to get into the back of the hip and fold where you need to fold. The feet move away from each other, the knees move towards each other. And this knee over knee is really the, the bolt of stability. And really, Gomukhasana is a great way to prepare for ankle to knee, and ankle to knee is a great way to prepare for Gomukhasana. So really, it's just about um, what you're focusing on that day. Come back into Bhattakanasana and notice the difference. Hmm. Okay. Let's try it seated. So I'm going to do two blankets. Some of you can use three blankets. Pretty much after three blankets, it's a, um, you get diminishing returns because <laughs> you tend to just slide off. Right leg will be on top. So let's start with our legs straight. Move your buttock bones back so you're really perched on the edge. And it's that sticking the butt out when we had our legs up the wall, okay? So left leg, knee forward, just like the pubic bone. Right leg, knee on top of knee. Again. Okay, from head to tail, I'm on a spit. I love to take the hands to the knees with the arms straight, the shoulders come back over the hips, and it helps to move the lungs forward. I'm gonna wake up my feet. What happens is people will um, sickle the ankle here, and it's like dumping into the outer heel when you stand. So another way, you can take the hands on the heels and lift the heels up. Lifting the heels up will tip you forward. It's like putting on a little kitten heel, right? It's a little more precarious. You get a little bit more on the edge of that downhill slope. Need to get all the way around the hip joint. Well, circle it around. So there'll be a place that's easier and a place that's not. But it's like you're dusting the corners. Go the other way. Circle it around and circle it around and circle it around. And if your hips here just feel like wet cement, well, one of the best ways is to just go up another floor. And by lifting the arms up, you lift your ribs up. And it, it literally makes the hips feel more spacious, they get more breath in there, and it's less arduous. All right, you're gonna get that first fold. So you can come forward and you can come back up, jutting into my ribs a little bit. So eventually, keep working the feet, you can go forward and back. And this is also how you get more facility in your hips, but you wanna make sure you're not coming forward with the front body overtaking the back. That would be counterproductive. You can just have the hands down beside you, crawl forward, reach through the inner heels, right? Don't sickle the ankle. So reach, 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 knee over knee, and then eventually your hips move away from the bottom foot and you're able to take your feet farther forward. 
and it doesn't bring you back, okay? And so really, you're in ankle to knee, you've just crossed over yourself. So it's another way of cross-referencing, and it really helps to wrap the sacrum wide and get you down into your depths. Actually, the inner heels, big toe lines of the feet. Eventually, just like in a hang, your whole torso is meeting your thigh. And then you can really feel the opening of the back of the hips. You can get the breath all the way down there and you're really like available to yourself. And when your torso hits your thigh, you can get the release of the back of your neck because you're really widening the sacrum here and it's like, oh, throat fits the knee. So good. And then you can actually move it out to one side, keep working your feet, you can move it around the other side. And the more you come out and around, the more you're gonna feel that anchoring place in the back of the hip. So just like the fan of the buttocks. So good. Do the other side, right leg, left leg, and then weave it the other way. Right leg forward. Knee is straight forward, not like in pigeon where it's out at that two o'clock position, right? Not at that 90-90 where we did. So we're crossing the midline like in a closed twist. Okay, knee over knee. If you find it difficult to get into Gomukhasana this way, you can come up in a table and weave your legs, and then as you sit down, your pelvis will be turned, will be pulled towards the bottom leg foot, which will take you off center. So when you come back, you have to think you're moving your hips away from the bottom foot, or you can just move the bottom foot away. All right, I'm gonna start with my hands on my heels this time, still on the edge of my blanket, spinning around and spinning around. You're really finding the balance. Again, the tendency will be to kind of dump into the bottom leg buttock or um, sitting bone. So move it around so you can go everywhere. Take your arms up, big sun breath in. And then right here, you're gonna swan up, pull yourself forward. You should be able to gather your legs and lift up off of yourself, right? And so if that feels like, what? <laughs> You're kind of stuck a little bit in the back. So stick your butt out, gather your legs, right? It's easy, they're in the middle, and feel like you can lift up. And from there, you come forward. Make sure your inner heels, stick your butt way, way out. Wrap your sacrum wide around to the front, let your head and neck go. Breathe into any place that you feel is, um, th there's tightness, right? Or gripping or holding. And a lot of times it's not from a muscular effort. That's not how you undo a misalignment or a place of congestion. It's from an allowing, a softening, and opening up from inside to create space to let, uh, give permission to a muscle that is stuck carrying the load or um, holding on for dear life, right? It, it's a real permission to release and then the slack that that muscle has been carrying of another muscle, hopefully that muscle when the joint comes back into that middle into the spaciousness, that other side that hasn't been working will be like, oh, oh, <laughs> and then you'll be in the middle. And then suddenly there'll be more space in every pose. And remember, there's no pain in space. Eventually your feet come further forward and then you're able to do all sorts of fun things like hand and arm to me and twisting it and going and swimming it. But for now, just work on the mechanics and on the right alignment of Govukasana. Come off my blanket. <laughs> so that's the practice for today. Thanks everyone. <laughs>